shockwaves going through the Pac-12 and through the nation concerning Lincoln Riley leaving yes. a blue blood, going to another blue blood uh, in Oklahoma fun. to USC move that's unprecedented, I will say, in the history of college football. And I've challenged just a number of viewerships during these live streams to serve up any transition of coaching jobs that rivals this. Are you talking about that one job in particular? Going from one or... job to another. There is nothing like it going from one this elite of a job, job. Okay. in Oklahoma going to USC. I was about to say, because Urban Meyer kind of went to Ohio State and that was big. But going from one job to another, I think the only argument you could even make would be Nick Saban from LSU to whoa, Alabama. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me clarify because you missed on those two. So, so when I... When I stated that, so I, I set out a challenge during a live stream a few days ago and said, I cannot think, I've been racking my brain, can't think of a similar move from elite program to elite program directly, Urban Meyer, Florida to Ohio yeah. State, but there was a one-year gap in between. And then there was the Dolphins gap for Nick Saban. There was a Dolphins gap for Nick Saban. And the best I could come up with, Mark Richt from Georgia to Miami. Yeah. Huh, so that, that is a really good question. Close, but I cannot come up with another one. People were throwing out like Brett Bielema from Wisconsin to Arkansas. Well, they are not elite programs. They're good programs, not elite programs. We're talking top three to five jobs in the nation. Now, I can't come up with that. Yeah, and it's weird because we could see we've seen that that caliber of moves twice Two this days year. in a row. And yes. I don't think it happens, but there is a chance we see it a third time this year. There's a chance Miami gets Mario Cristobal. I don't think it's going to happen. A very, 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 yeah. very long shot. I don't think it's happening at all. But like the fact that it's even mentioned, it's like this is one of the more insane seasons since 2007 I have I have seen. I know I haven't been watching as long as you, Mark, but man, it, this has been wild. Which is another way of saying you're not as old as me. I get it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but I'm, you know, I'm younger than most people who get into this stuff right now. You knocked out one of my questions, which was going to be, is there a concern in the Oregon fan no. base? Okay. <laughs> no, not, okay. not in the slightest. If So we're two weeks from signing day. If something was going to happen, don't you think it should have happened by now? I have a Miami channel and we just concluded a Miami live stream and those people are on the Mario oh, they're train. On it. They are on, they're on the Gino Toretta or whatever. They're, yeah, they were on all of that. I've been in the, the Miami spaces, chopping it up with a few of them guys, even been talking to some former players and uh, one of the Oregon assistants, Alex Mirabals hopped in there a couple of times. He didn't say anything, but he's, he's hopped into the spaces and it's, it's been really fun conversation, but when we come back to it, I know his family is there and cool. Other than that, there's almost zero argument for him to go to Miami. Like at, in 2021, what is the benefit for him going to Miami? Okay. You'll probably have a smaller recruiting budget. You'll probably have a smaller assistant pool. You might have a higher base salary. You do avoid those taxes. You have worse facilities. You're in a, tougher region to recruit because of who you're recruiting against like there really isn't a benefit to it from what i've been able to see so to my original question since we were headed in that direction before you brought up mario lincoln riley to usc shock waves going through college football oregon being the current Love best it. program in the conference what is the response of ducks fans i absolutely love it I I am excited that there will be that matchup in the because you need that matchup. You need the Georgia Alabama. You need the what has been Ohio State Penn State, but now might be Ohio State Michigan again. You need these matchups to bolster your conference because the Big Twelve, the ACC, and the Pac Twelve have struggled with one team. You know, it's like their perception has struggled. Clemson's been like, okay, they're cakewalking teams. Oregon's been like, okay, they're cakewalking teams. Then they go lose to one of those cakewalk teams, but still. And then you have Oklahoma. They're cakewalking teams not named Kansas State. And having that premier matchup, also being on separate divisions is 
is great for the conference. I that Pac-12 title game in a couple years once Lincoln Riley gets things going, Mario Cristobal's got his teams rolling. It's just going to be amazing for the sport, amazing for the conference, amazing for TV networks. You'll have a game in the West Coast that everybody actually cares about now, and it'll be really fun to see. I'm excited for it, and I don't think the impact for Oregon recruiting-wise is going to be as massive as people think. I don't think they realize how much of a national recruiting Oregon has been doing, and a lot of their California kids are from Northern California as well. You have the San Diego guys we get, like Byron Cardwell, and a lot of players like that. And even when USC was in their heyday, Oregon was competing with them. I think Pete Carroll had, was one win above 500 against the University of Oregon. And, you know, it was it, it's always been really competitive since Oregon's become a quality program. And I think it'll just be even better for the conference, especially now that Washington also, I think, made a fairly good hire 